day, Billy Blundell, infamous gangster of Essex. I think he originally was from the East End, where himself and his brother, Eddie Boy, built up the ice cream vans, which they controlled in the 60s, later on moved to Thurrock, and Lou Martindale, otherwise known as Lou Yates. He changed his name when he went to London to start working the doors, um, because obviously back in those days, there was no licenses or anything. There was lots of people getting bashed up, uh, and also for tax reasons and whatnot. They used to use moody names. So these are the two guys at the centre of this story. Before we get down to it, which was a brutal, bloody fight, uh, room at the top, Ilford in Essex, we will take a look at both characters and their sort of histories to give you a little brief synopsis of that before we get into the, the brawl that they had. So Lou Yates from St... Sorry, Lou Martindale was Lou Yates later on when he moved to London. From St. Helens originally, born around about 1945. Learned to box at the Britannia Club in St. Helens. Um, he heard he got married, had a few kids. He was training, doing bits of boxing, bits of security, different things. He'd listened to Roy Shaw, Roy Pretty Boy Shaw on the radio, challenging anyone in the country that he would do them for 10K. Now, 10K, the rough uh, house price at the time was around about 13,000, so it's a lot of money for, for, for a young man from St. Helens. So he decided to go up there. He had a friend who sort of lived in, in and around Forest Gate in the East End, went up there. They put a challenge out to Roy. Um, Roy accepted it, said, put your 10K up. He didn't realise he had to put 10K up as well. So it was never going to happen. Went back to St. Helens, decided to go and work in London, um, earn some dough and try and get his sort of his mission to get to Roy. So he lived with his, his pal's flat, uh, Forest Gate. Went to Terry Lawless's gym for a while in Canning Town, um, doing bits and pieces there and was working the doors. And the first door he worked was the room at the top which was a popular nightclub, but loads of faces would go there. And if you look at the pictures of Lou, not the tallest uh, guy, probably about 5'9", maybe, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, I think. Um, but his shoulders so broad, um, real heavy, stocky guy, um, but could box as well, apparently. He was a good boxer and supreme strength and he talks in his book of being very violent guy there's a link in the description to his book guys billy blundell on the other hand um brought up in the east east end with his brother eddie boy they claimed that they were sort of businessmen more than anything but they built up the ice cream vans and everything else um as well as other other businesses and became quite wealthy. They were buying lots of properties and everything else. Moved to Essex, where there was an infamous shootout that Billy Blundell and Eddie uh, Blundell had with a little firm from around that area. And this little firm had employed Donnie the Bull Adams, to, who had the legendary fighter Roy Shaw, to um, put the heavy on him as well. And it ended up in a shootout. And they went in to their, I think it was a cab office, and they've they've kicked the doors in, whatever, gone in there. They've shot Eddie. They were trying to escape out the back. Billy's escaped, come round, the, got to the car, got his shotty out, and then started chasing round the front, started chasing Donny Adams, shot Donny Adams in the arse, um, let off a few other shots, shot someone else, I think. And that was all reported in the newspapers and everything else, so it was quite an infamous um, little battle that they had, which brought them to see even more notoriety. So that's just a brief background on, on the two of them. Um, this incident apparently happened at the room at the top. It was in the early days of Lou Yates uh, working there on the door. It had come to drinking up time, 
lots of faces in there, lots of big groups of men, etc. There's a big group of sturdy-looking geezers, do you know what I mean, standing at the bar. And he, one of his fellow doormen have gone over, asked him to drink up, and they just blanked him. Not interested uh, about drinking up. Obviously, they were a serious firm from the area. It's just standard thing. If you if you're a well um if you're a firm with a big reputation, you've been out for drinking. You do sort of take liberties. You think that you, you know, the normal rules don't apply to you. While Louis Yates has come over, obviously he's not from the plot, so he, you know he doesn't know who's who, gangsters, this and other. He didn't care, and that's you know that's always a a good bonus of bringing people in if you've got doormen working for you from different areas or out the area, because they're not going to have that same fear factor if they've been brought up and, and know who the families are and they sort of live near them and all that kind of thing. That all plays into it. Uh, you know, I worked at door myself for, for quite a few years and it's definitely a factor, okay? So, Louis H's gone over and said, look, drink up, etc. They're mugging him off as well. Blanking him, bit of pushing and shoving. Louis Yates, bang, he's cracked one of them. Someone's cracked him, and it's turned into a real fight where Lou's just piling into them all, smashing people left, right, and centre. They're giving as good as they're getting. Billy has smashed a big um, whiskey type glass on Louis Yates' forehead, opened him up real bad, but Lou Yates has gone to town on Billy, smashing him, um, smashing him up, and and sort of chasing them out of the 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 boozer. There's like lifts that would go up to take you up there. And this one guy had someone had pulled a knife, but he managed to do him. And then one of them was pretending to pull a gun. Apparently, this is Lou Yates' version. Um, but he ran off. Uh, I had a few mates and they were trying to get down in the lifts and he attacked them in the lift. So that's the the actual story that Louis H gave in his book that there was just this bloody, bloody battle and he was going through through them all on his own, but he got opened up real bad himself. But apparently it went on from there where members of Billy Blundell's crew, whether they were sort of working for him or they were just tabbies or whatever it's not very clear but he had several other run-ins with a couple of these uh, a scotch guy who worked for them who bashed up and someone else that he'd, he'd give it to as well and one theme running through louis H's book obviously you know with these type of books they're never going to talk about the ones they lost they're never going to talk about what actually happened it's going to be hammed up by the ghostwriter so we all know that. But the the theme of the book, there's plenty of violence. I'm not saying nothing happened. I'm just saying that it gets exaggerated and people don't. That's not just Louis Yates. That's including Roy Shrew, Lennon Clean, and everyone else. They don't mention the ones they lose, as we know. Okay? Um, but there was some bad blood. But apparently, Lou then, or Billy came to the club to see the owner. Him and Lou spoke. Billy, they, was all, they had a bit of a laugh about it shook hands and then they were good friends from that point on but i thought that was uh quite an interesting situation because i've not seen anyone else speak about it and i was rereading the book and i must have missed it or couldn't remember it at the time because i remember i read this book in hardback i think it was years and years ago when it first came out but it's now on kindle version but yeah i thought i'd bring that one to you hope you liked it guys Smash the likes if you did. If you're from Essex or London and you've got any memories from back in the 80s and 90s of these clubs and all the stuff that went on, get in the comment sections and leave your sort of memories. I tried to source some of the photos for it. All right. Cheers, guys. Take care.